this is about for true. So, um, so I had somebody who got really angry, you know, saying, hey, you're way off. And he basically accused me saying, look, you know, basically you're denying scripture because when it talks about um, these people will cause the oblation to cease. And basically it's talking about this, this, this man of sin who caused the oblation, he caused the sacrifices to stop. And um, I'm saying that those are all those who are stubborn, stiff neck and uncircumcised of heart because when they don't believe they're not offered up. They're not, they're not received into the kingdom. You can't enter the kingdom unless you're born again. So, um, the reason people don't go to heaven is because they choose not to believe. And those who don't go to heaven, who don't have the living water, what do they do? Are they going around giving a, a true gospel? No, they're giving a false gospel. So they don't enter in and they don't want other people to go in because they don't have living water. They can't offer living water. So, they're the ones who cause the sacrifice to stop. And the sacrifice that I'm talking about is the sacrifice of spiritual sacrifices, the sacrifice of life. See, it's a play on words. God's using, God is actually using spir spiritual sacrifice. And I'm going to show you that. I'm not just going to tell you that. I'm going to show you that from the Bible, as I should. Because if I teach you anything, you should say, Marcus, can you show me that from the scriptures? Can you just show me that from the scriptures? No one's saying, don't ask me questions. I'm saying, if I tell you something from the scriptures, instead of saying I'm way off and I've gone on the deep end and I'm agnostic and using un other words that aren't found in the Bible, just show me from the scriptures what you're saying. And show me and say, look, this is what I believe. Could you answer this? And blah, blah, blah. And we'll go and we'll reason from the scriptures. Do you know I've had people show me stuff from the scriptures that I had noticed and I was like, man, and it actually helped me to understand something else. So I actually love it when people show me stuff from the scriptures. You know, I'm teaching stuff that I believe I know, of course. Why would I teach something I don't think I understand? Because I don't want to be like, here's the thing. Even though I know that I can be corrected on stuff, it would be very silly of me to teach something that I don't know. Because how does that help to establish anything as far as like, you know, people listening to someone who teaches something wrong and they're always wrong and they can't answer the questions. But apparently that doesn't seem to make a difference because actually there's a lot of, I mean, you can go and look at any religion and they're teaching all kinds of stuff. And there's people who have, I mean, hundreds of thousands of subscribers teaching false religions. So don't give me this stuff about popularity. Like that's not... That is not the judge. That is not the criteria that I'm using. The criteria is for me is that if I can look through the Bible and I can show how every part of it works, how it's not a lie. Like God didn't say one thing in one verse and then another thing in another verse. And it's like, okay, these just two contradictions. So I'm going to just pick one and say, okay, this one's true. That part is not true. Or then what I do is here's a common tactic. Oh, that's not for this dispensation. Oh, that's not written for you. That's written for this group of people. You know, people do that all. There's all kinds of tactics and people just go for it. Here's what I'm going to do. So the person was saying that when I read about the prophecy about Daniel and it talked about causing the sacrifices to stop, you got to understand there was a sacrifice that was the blood sacrifice. Jesus, the man, purged the law with his blood but there's also the living sacrifice. The living sacrifice? That's the spiritual sacrifices which are acceptable to God. God doesn't accept death. And the Bible clearly says, guys, flesh and blood can't enter the kingdom of God. I'm not making this up. So there's living, God's the God of the living and not the dead. So if it's a living sacrifice, He's saying that once you die to the flesh, you're born again by the what? By the spirit. And if a man be, unless a man be born again, he can't enter the kingdom of God. So what's delivered up? The spirit man. So to prove my point, because this person was offended, they're like, what do you mean the man of sin get out of the way is talking about just people who don't believe the gospel? 
I mean, for one, it says the man of sin. And so people are like, well, there's a specific man of sin that that doesn't include everybody who doesn't believe. Even though it says the men are drowning in perdition, that doesn't, that's one person. That's not a lot of people. And even though it says that people are desolate of righteousness and there's desolation upon the earth, they're like, that, that, that can't be one person. Well, see, the reason it seems like it's one person, but then it seems like it's many people, is because in Adam all die, as in Christ shall all be made alive. So if you're in Adam, the corrupt fruit, that's bringing forth death. I mean, you can't deny that everyone who's born of Adam, all the children of the flesh die. I, I don't understand how you can deny that. And if, if that's not the case, then you must, you'd have to call God a liar to say that someone who's born of the flesh doesn't have to be born again. That's like saying, you got to call, how can Jesus be the firstborn of many brethren? You're saying, well, no, nah, we don't have to be born again, but Jesus is the firstborn of many brethren. You, I mean, I'm trying to figure out how you're trying to get around these verses. So I'm saying that, yes, Christ died for our sins, right? I'm not doubting that. Purge the law with his blood. I'm not doubting that. So the blood was spilled into the earth. They pierced the side and out came what? Water and blood. And so it says in 1 John 5, 6, it says, that is he that came by water and blood. Not by water only, but by water and blood. They pierced the side and out came what? Water and blood. But then it says something else. But it is the, but the spirit that beareth witness, the spirit is truth. It didn't say the spirits bear witness. It doesn't say the spirit, the water and blood bear witness. It said it's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is truth. Because there's one spirit of life and there's one spirit of truth. There's one spirit of righteousness and we're justified in the spirit. Right? So the Bible says it's the spirit of righteousness and the Bible says clearly it's the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life, the flesh profit of nothing. So you're like, well, wait a minute, what about the blood? Well, the blood purged the law. He purged the law with his blood. He did that for every single man, but every single man doesn't go to heaven because guess what? Nobody goes to heaven because of the law. That's what the law. So now you don't, you don't have to keep the law to be saved. Isn't that great? That's beautiful, right? Well, what about those who were born before Jesus Christ went to the cross? Well, it's funny. The Bible says he's the lamb slain when from the foundation of the world. You say, well, how do you explain that? Well, the reason that it is, is because Jesus says, if the spirit of Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Let me show you that because you know what? It's, it's a habit. I have to show you because look. But ye are not in the flesh. Now, this verse is not confusing. Jesus Christ came in the flesh, right? But guess what? Ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, right? The spirit of Christ. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. So he's saying that when the spirit of God was in the flesh, he's saying the way God says, sees it, if you have his spirit, you're already considered dead to the flesh. The instant that the spirit of God is in you. Why? And then it says, now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, it says he is none of his. That is not a confusing verse by any form or fashion. It's basically saying, look, even though Jesus came in the flesh of David, the flesh of Mary, the flesh of whatever, from the flesh of Adam. I mean, there's Adam and Eve and everybody is descended from them. So it's starting from Adam and Eve. And he says, even though he was in there, he came in the likeness of sinful flesh because when he said when they sinned, they had corrupted themselves in all the earth. And he's saying, look, if the spirit of God be in you, he's saying, look, you're not in the flesh because he says. Because the spirit is in you. And if the spirit is in you, he says you're not considered to be a child of the flesh. He's discounting the flesh. Then he says this, he said, if any man have not the spirit of Christ. So basically, if any man doesn't have the spirit, which means if you have the spirit, it means you're what? Not in the flesh. 
Hence, the Bible says the children of the flesh are not children of God because when you have the spirit of God, you are not in the flesh. The children of the flesh aren't the children of God. A Jew is not one outwardly, but inwardly circumcision of the heart by the spirit. So this all matches the Bible. I'm not like making stuff up out of the blue. And just to go and show you, then you go down from Romans 8, 9 to 8, 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead. Now, is God the God of the living or God is the God of the dead? God is the God of the living. So it's saying that the spirit, now he's saying, if Christ be in you. But wait a minute, there was the, there was the mediator, there was the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So was the spirit of Christ in Christ? Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, was the spirit of Christ in the man Christ? Yes. So if the spirit of Christ was in the man Christ, he was not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Which is why when you go to 1 John 5, 6, that is he that came by water and blood, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. How come it doesn't say the flesh is truth? How come it doesn't say the blood is truth? It says the spirit is beareth witness. The spirit is truth. One spirit. And then it equates the spirit of God with the spirit of Christ. And says if the spirit of Christ be in you, it says you're not in the flesh. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead. That's talking about the flesh. The part that's dead is the flesh. But God is the God of the living because the spirit quickeneth and giveth life. So it's saying basically... When you're born again, it says you walk after the spirit. Now, the unique thing is that it was God manifest in the flesh. So when the spirit of God came in the flesh of Mary, guess what? You can go back to Romans 8, 9. But not only that, when God came to, when God in the flesh came to Adam and Eve in the garden, you can go back to 8, 9. And you can go to 810 because of the Christ be in you, the body is dead. So he came in the flesh. But guess what? Because he was in the flesh, he was not in the flesh. Because if the spirit of God be in you, the body is dead. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. It's telling you it's the spirit of life and the spirit is righteousness. That's why he's the lamb slain when? From the foundation of the world. Now you can't, now I have the spirit of Christ in me. But when someone see me, they're like, what are you talking about? You're dead. I can see you. People are like, you're agnostic. Okay, this just take your pen and scratch this verse out. Just, just say, look, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling in you. Now, if any man have the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. You don't like this verse. Just scratch it out, man. If Christ be in you, the body is dead. Are you saying the body of Christ is a dead body? So basically when people see you walking around, they don't see that you have life. They don't see that you have eternal life. What are they looking at when they see you? They're seeing your dead body. So when you go to Revelation and it says they looked up on their dead bodies, that's what they're talking about. They see your dead bodies. They don't see that you have life. You can't tell who has eternal life. So you can say, you can use words that aren't biblical, like you're agnostic and all this stuff. When God clearly says the children of the flesh aren't children of God, like if you don't believe it, man, just say you don't believe it. And listen to this. Then you go from 810 to 811. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. God is a God of living and not the dead. Remember that. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your what kind of bodies? Mortal bodies. It's saying that the mortal body of Jesus, the body of Jesus was a mortal body. The one that was raised was a mortal body. And he's saying when you receive the spirit, that's your mortal body. But it's saying when the spirit of Christ is in you, it says your body is considered dead, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So it's saying you're justified and you're righteous by the spirit of God. Okay? So that explains a lot, right? Hopefully that explains a lot. Now I'm going to go back because this person was so upset because they're like, dude, what are you talking about? So when I say that those who cause the oblations to cease... I'm saying the oblations to cease is talking about 
the, what God is accepting is the spirit man, which is received up living sacrifices, not the dead body. See, you, some of you guys are stopping at a point of the cross and you're not understanding the cross. The point was he, the mortal body was quickened, but at the same time, God is a spirit. So that mortal body was quickened by the spirit and see that it's, it's discounting. It's saying, look, the children of the flesh are the children of God. Like, I don't know how many times I got to say this. God is a spirit, knows that worshiper must worship in spirit. We are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and truth. And so if the things which are seen are temporal, and you saw Jesus' mortal body, which is why they say it's mortal in the actual Bible, you understand that God is a spirit. It settles it. That kills the Trinity. It's dead. And that kills any lie about the children of the flesh being the children of God. It's dead. It kills any lie. See, it kills it. And, and people just cannot accept it. But now I'm going to get back to, see, what this person couldn't understand. They're like, how can you say that the man of sin be revealed? That man of sin and that man, that abomination of desolation the guy who claims that he sits in the temple of God and declares himself to be God, well, he's not the temple of God. He's saying he's the temple of God and he's declaring himself to be God because he, he, he puts himself above all that is called God. That's just saying that the person who have the flesh, the stiff-necked person, they refuse to believe. And by doing that, instead of humbling themselves, they're exalting themselves up and declaring themselves to be God. I mean, when you don't believe, you're not humbling yourself. You're exalting yourself. Right? So I'm going to start with Matthew 23 because I'm trying to explain this. And it says, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to the disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. These guys, they try to take the law, but they use the law unlawfully. The law is a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. The law is telling you, yeah, you're guilty according to the law. You're not going to be justified according to the law. Don't you see the law and what the law requires? By the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Right? The he that worketh not but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly. Ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. But if you don't see yourself as ungodly, then you're not going to have faith. You're not going to believe on him to save you if you say, oh, I, don't, I don't believe I'm ungodly. So you exalt yourself. So these guys sit in the seat of Moses, but they use the law unlawfully. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. So you look at the law, but you see the law as it is. It'll expose the fact that you're a sinner. But do ye not after their works, by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. For they say and do not. Do you, if you want to be justified by the law, do you not see what the law requires? For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born. Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Those of us who have believed, we do enter his rest. Why did they, those who did believe not, they came short of entering his rest. He says there remaineth the day, right, that they could enter in. Meaning, if you believe, you can enter his rest. But until you believe, you're not going to enter his rest. You got to be found in Christ, having not your own righteousness, but the righteousness that you receive that cometh by faith, right? And lay them on men's shoulders. They treat you like animals, like oxen, right? They're, made, they're trying to profit off of you. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers, right? They, they, they just put more and more burdens on you. They work you to what? Death. Sin, when it fulfills itself, bringing forth death. They're not bringing life. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. What is that? That is that outer border of their garment because their garment in their flesh is death. That garment, that outer border, that's outside of the temple. That outer border, they can't, 
enter the temple because they have that out of their still children of the flesh and they multiply that corruption. Hence, their outer border, that outer man, they enlarge the borders of their garments because they're not clothed in his what? Righteousness. So they enlarge the borders of their garments. They bring it forth Corruption, bringeth 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 forth death, bringeth forth death, bringeth forth death. And love the uppermost rooms at the feast, they exalt themselves. And the chief seats in the what? Synagogues of Satan. And greetings in the markets, right? They buy and sell men for profit. And to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are what? Brethren. Right? So the children of the flesh can all be considered brethren because everybody came from Adam and Eve. And the children of the promise can all be called brethren because Jesus Christ is the firstborn of many brethren. But the children of the flesh aren't the children of God, so your brother is according to the flesh, and there's brothers according to the promise. But light had no communion with darkness. If you're not born again, then you are not a child of the light. But if you're born again, you are a child of the light. But the only thing you have in common with the unbeliever is the flesh. So those are your brothers according to the outer garments. Because they can't see that the outer garment that you've died to the flesh. Right? And call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father which is in heaven. Now, now who can say that? Only those who are born again. God is the God of the living and not the dead. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Because we're coming to give people life. We're offering them. Think about a servant. Somebody's hungry. You say, hmm, can I offer you some water, some bread? You go to a restaurant. Can I offer you some water, some bread? What water and bread are we offering? Are we offering carnal water and carnal bread? No. We're telling people to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're offering living water and we're offering the bread of life. And whosoever shall look, here's the part, exalt himself, right? He exalted himself over everything that is God. See, we are the children of God. He's saying, no, I'm the head. God is not the head. He's saying we're the head, right? That's why they put on your shoulders heavy burdens, right? They exalt themselves. Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. But see, they even though they claim to be gods, they will die in their sins and go back to the dust. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted, right? He that layeth down his life for my name's sake, meaning once you believe the gospel, I've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. We are risen in Christ unto life, quicken us by his spirit. So we are what? Lifted up because we're sealed in Christ. Right? The most high. Home of shell shall be that. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. Now, here's the part where I'm talking about the spiritual sacrifices. You don't have living water or the bread of life. You haven't drank the water. You can't offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God. Right? See, the sac the, what's acceptable unto God Look Listen, let me, let me go to this As newborn babes, born again desiring the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is what? Gracious. Some people say he's not gracious. I don't believe in grace. I don't believe in that old, you know, free salvation stuff. To whom's coming as unto a living stone. That's what he's accepting. Life. See, the, the flesh, the blood, that was of this earth. That was to atone for the sins of the law. But nobody goes to hell because of the law. And he did that for every man. So why doesn't every man go to heaven? Because after you believe, then you become a living stone and you get what? The spirit of God. God is the God of the living and not the dead. 
unto a stone, disallowed indeed of who? Men, but chosen of God and precious. Now, how are you chosen in a good way? In Christ. And precious. What is a precious stone, guys? It is a jewel. And then it says, ye also as lively stones. Lively stones just means living stones, right? Living stones, ye also as lively stones. They have life. And men are considered from the dust. They're not living stones. They're stones of death. Are built up a what kind of house? A spiritual house. Now tell me, if you're stiff neck and proud, do you, how do you, are you, are you born again? Are you offered up a lively stone if you don't believe the gospel? No. Who got in the way of that person being offered up as a lively stone and them having life? They did. They were offered living water. They said, I refuse. Right? They exalted themselves above everything that is God, right? Because we're the new creatures and created in Christ. We're the children offering the cup of living water and they're offended. Right? They're offended by the gospel. It's foolishness to them. So who stopped them from believing? They did. They got in the way. It was their pride that stopped them from being born again. It's not God's fault that they're not born again. It's their fault they're not born again. They're the ones who refuse to believe. So our lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual look, sacrifices. He's talking about being offered up a lively stone. He's saying these are people who enter heaven. Unless a man be born again, he can't enter the kingdom of God. He can't see the kingdom of God. So there was a sacrifice of the man, Jesus Christ, but then there's the eternal life, which is in the spirit, the spirit that quickeneth to give us life. That's the part that the, that this, the, the man of sin stops. The man of sin, he doesn't stop people from being offered to offer death. He doesn't start people. He doesn't, he doesn't stop people from sacrificing to the fire. He doesn't stop people from offering their sacrifice to Baal. He doesn't stop people from going into that fire. He, he does that work. He does the work of the devil. Right? Because if, I, if a man who's not saved kills another man who's not saved, what do you think that means for that person? Is that person going to go to heaven? No. So Satan's divided against himself. That's why his house can't stand. Satan goes around killing other people. People he kill who aren't saved, where do they go? Hell. If he tries to kill somebody who's saved, well, the people who are saved, he says they already have eternal life. He that believeth, liveth and believeth on me shall never die. So we just go to be with the Lord. We're offered up a spiritual sacrifice acceptable unto God. He that believeth on me shall never die. That's why it says, uh, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Offer up spiritual sacrifices. That's what people call the rapture. Or well, that's why they use the word rapture and they don't use these words. Acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Okay? So it's letting you know that that's who the elect, the election is Jesus Christ. Wherefore also is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in sign a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Right? Unto you, which therefore believeth, he is precious. We consider it a precious thing. But unto them which be disobedient, those are those who don't believe. Stiff neck, uncircumcised of heart, unbelief. The stone which the builders disallow the same is made the head of the corner. A, st a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to them. Even to them which stumbled at the word, being disobedient, whereby they were a what? Appointed. But ye are a chosen generation because what because you've been born again you've been regenerated a royal priesthood a and holy nation so all the people are being gathered from all the four corners of the world when they believe they're new creatures created in christ and gathered into a holy nation because all the nations on the earth are divided but everybody who believes they're born again and they're they're born again into one holy nation there is no division
in the body. And peculiar people that ye should show forth the praise of him that called you where? Out of darkness. Now this is the world is darkness. Is there any question of what this Bible is talking about? Into his marvelous light. And listen to this. Which in time past were not a people. Because you can't be like, well, I was born a child of the flesh and I'm a child of God according to the flesh. But are now the people of God. It's like, you're one of the people of God. No, you're the people of God. Which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Listen, my kingdom is not of this world. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. My kingdom is not of this world. Abstain from fleshly lust. The children of the flesh are children of God, which war against the soul. God's kingdom is not divided. Children of the flesh are children of God. He's saying the flesh wars against the soul, which means it wars against the spirit. So how is God's kingdom divided? If the children of the flesh are children of God, his house is divided against himself. How can it stand? That's why it says the spirit of Christ being the body is dead, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Letting you know that that war was already finished. The spirit of everybody's children of the flesh, they're going to die anyway. Jesus is saying, look, he led captivity captive. I come to give life. You need to escape. I'm the one. You're going to be cast into the fire. It's not my fault, but I'm the one who's doing that. I'm the one who's judging you. But you're already condemned because you believe not. Believe and you'll be declared righteous. Having your conversations honest amongst the who? Gentiles. A Gentile is a heathen and unbeliever. That whereas they speak of you as evildoers, that by your good works, what are the works? Preaching the gospel. Preach the word in season, not season. Where they shall behold, right? Glorify God. How do they glorify God? Because God is not worshipped with men's hands. God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit. So how do you glorify God? By believing the gospel. The glorious gospel. In the day of what? Visitation. Lo, I stand at the door and knock. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So we come in Christ's steed. And when we come and give the gospel, if you believe the gospel, guess who comes? Jesus Christ comes. It's no longer I that live, but Christ delivered in me. And he saves you. If you don't believe the gospel, Christ is like, okay, depart from me. You work over iniquity. I never knew you. You don't receive me. You're not my son. Right? So I'm going to leave it at that. But now, so that's what I'm talking about. So then we go back to... The scribes and the Pharisees, right? So it says how they exalt themselves and they, they'll be abased. He that humbles themselves will be exalt, exalted. Warns you, scribes and Pharisees, for ye, listen to this, ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Jesus says, if you don't gather with me, you scatter abroad. If you don't have living water, you're not giving living water. What stopped these people from getting into heaven? Are you a Calvinist now? No, God didn't make them not believe. God is just saying you didn't believe. And at some point, God knew that you weren't ignorant. You became willfully ignorant and you became stubborn and you hardened your heart. And at some point, God says, okay, that's it. Now you've blasphemed the Holy, the Holy Ghost. And since you don't want to believe, you refuse then therefore, I'm going to harden your heart where you, where you hardened it. Right? Why do you resist the Holy Spirit? She says, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven. This is happening throughout all time. There are people who are unbelievers who shut up the kingdom of heaven, who don't believe they don't enter in, and they don't want anyone else to enter in, and they can't offer life because they don't have life. For ye shut up. These are not offering up spiritual sacrifices, living sacrifices. Ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Right? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye do what? Devour widows' houses. Satan goes around as a lion seeking whom he may devour. Widows, because they're married to who? Death. Your husband is death. He's dead. There's no life in him. And for a pretense, make long prayers. God doesn't hear. It says, God heareth not sinners. 
Therefore, ye shall receive the greater damnation. Right? Woe unto you. See, the greater damnation is saying, look, when you become a teacher and then you start teaching other people, when that, because you're, because God looks at the, that, see, it's one thing for a person to be ignorant, but when you become a teacher and you start teaching a false gospel, God takes that very serious. If you want to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you just start teaching a false gospel and see how that, see how, see, that's why it's so dangerous to teach a false gospel and a false God. It is very dangerous because you're teaching other people to believe on a false God. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land, right, to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him, you make him, they block, right? They don't want anyone to enter the door, the way, the truth, the life, Jesus. You make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves, right? Woe unto you, blind guides, they don't see by faith. We say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind. For whether is greater the gold of the temple, the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold. You need to be sanctified, sealed in Christ. They're talking about material and carnal things. God's talking about spiritual eternal things. And whatsoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever swear by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Salvation is a free gift, not of works, lest anyone should boast. These guys are carnal. They're looking for money. These are the money changers. Ye fools and blind guys, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctified it. Right? See, they're worshiping at, they're worshiping, these guys are worshiping death. They don't understand. They got to believe and get life. Yeah, yeah. He died for your sins. That's true. Now, to get the spirit, you got to believe and get life, the free gift, and be acceptable, the acceptable sacrifice, which is life. God's not like, ooh, I love and worship death. More death, more death, more death. No, he's like, I come to give life and life more abundantly. Whosoever there shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it and by all things thereon. And who shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein. Right? So we are all those who are entered my rest. Remember the beginning? These guys put heavy burdens on you. And Jesus says, come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. He's saying, look, you're swearing by him and him that therein in. You're blaspheming. And he that shall swear by heaven, swear by the what? Throne of God. Wow. And him that sitteth thereon. The throne of God and him that sitteth thereon. How many thrones are there? The throne of God and him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithes of men, anise, and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, the law is a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. All men are already, already guilty. He became sin, he knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God, where? In him, judgment. He that doesn't believe is he is condemned already. He that believeth on the Son hath light. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life. Mercy, by grace through faith you are saved, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is a free gift. These ought you have done and not to leave the others undone. That's why they sit in the law of Moses, because they use the law unlawfully. Ye blind guys would strain in a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, for ye make clean the outside of the cup. He's talking about their flesh, which is filthy. They enlarge their phylacteries and their garments, but they're not clothed in the righteousness of God. In my flesh dwelleth no good thing. All the works of the flesh are as filthy rags before God. Outside of the cup and of the platter, the cup and the platter, drink of the water that I give will never thirst, platter, eat of the bread, the bread of life. But within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, cleans first that which is within, right? That which is within. If the spirit of Christ be in you, the body is dead. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. That is within. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Right? The cup and the platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Right? 
clothed in his righteousness. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto white sepulchers. Whited sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly. Outward. They're saying, oh, we're, we're, we, 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 our sins are washed away as white as snow. That's what they're saying. But are within full of dead men's bones and are of all uncleanness. Now, come on, guys. Come on. <clears throat> Sorry, man. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Void, abominable, desolate, darkness, goats. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs. They bring it forth to death, guys. They're of corrupt seed. The day that thou eat it, thou shalt surely die. It was told to Adam and Eve. So how are you telling me that corrupt tree is bringing forth corrupt fruit when all the flesh and all the earth was corrupted before God when they ate of the tree? You're trying to tell me that this world was just the world of darkness. Light came into the world and darkness comprehended not. You're trying to tell me that this is his kingdom when he just told you boldly, plainly, my kingdom is not of this world. Unless a man be born again, he can't enter nor see the kingdom of God. Ye build tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. He's saying that they're guilty. Now, these guys are born currently. He's accusing them. He's saying they're guilty of the prophets and the tombs from the beginning. How can that be? Because you're either a work of God or a work of the devil. It's as plain as you're either a child of the light or a child of the darkness. You're either a sheep or you're a goat. And if you're still a child of flesh, that means you're not born again, which means you haven't received the promise, which means you're a child of the devil. It's as simply as that. Simple as that. Of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers of them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Because he's saying, look, you're saying that your fathers were children of the flesh. And you're saying your fathers are those who are children of the flesh, which is Adam and Eve. Well, the children of the flesh aren't children of God. So by admitting you're a child of the flesh, you're admitting you're not a child of God. See how God reveals that? Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. He just said they're full of all iniquity and hypocrisy and unrighteousness. He says, fill ye then up the measure of your fathers. And listen to this. Now, is God blaspheming God? Listen. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. What's a genitile? Is a generation of covered with tiles. Serpent is a reptile covered with tiles. Scales. Ye serpents, ye generation. You must be regenerated. Born again. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, anyone who's calling people who aren't born again, God's chosen people are calling God the devil. You're blaspheming, man. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Offering up spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God. They don't go in, neither do they allow anyone go in, and they die in their sins, and he's saying, you cannot escape. How can you escape? If you don't believe on the way, the truth, the life, how can you escape? If you're not found in him, having not your own righteousness, how can you escape? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men, right? But they think it's foolishness. And scribes and some of them ye shall kill and crucify and some of them ye shall scorch in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. That upon you, listen, come all, not some, all the righteous blood. What you've done to the least of these, my brother, and you've done it unto me. See, we are brothers according to him, according to the flesh, but then we're brothers according to the promise. And he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. So though the children of the flesh aren't children of God, God is looking at it like what? 
What you've done to these, you've done it unto me. Though you can't kill them. They'll never die. All the righteous blood is shed upon what? The earth. Flesh and blood can't enter the kingdom of God. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. He said, like, some of these people is like, well, we weren't even born yet. What are you talking about? You already accusing us of stuff we didn't do. He said, no, you're of your father. Feel thee then up the work of your father. I'm accounting what they did because you're not born again. If you're a child of the flesh, I'm giving them, you're accounting all the works that they've done. If you're in Christ, then you have the work of Christ. But if you don't have the work of the spirit, that's why it's the body of Christ. Then you have the works of the devil. Feel, the in, feel ye then up the works of your father. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon what? This generation. What generation? What generation are you talking about? Um, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? So that would be all those who aren't born again. You see the problem? You see the problem with carnal Zionism and the Trinity? All these things should come upon this generation. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Now there's a Jerusalem above that's free. That's the mother of us all. Then there's the children of the bond servant, the children of the flesh. And it says the children of the bond woman, which are children of flesh, will not have inheritance with children of the free woman, which are the children of the promise. And it's saying that the children of the flesh persecuted the children of the, of the promise of the spirit. It says, cast out the bond woman, the children of the flesh, for they shall not be heir with children of the promise, saying they can't enter the kingdom. So the whole world is considered Jerusalem according to the flesh. But there's a tribe which are born again, which are in the light, the 12 hours in the day, and there's 12 hours in the night. Hence, 12 disciples. Hence, the manners of the fruit of the tree, 12 months in a year. Be fruitful and multiply. There's a season where a man is born, and there's a time when you're born again. 12 times 12 is 144. One day with the Lord is a thousand years. Be fruitful and multiply. Multiply life and life more abundantly. Don't multiply corruption and death. So the true Jerusalem are all those who are in the light. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And he's saying, my children aren't your children of darkness. My children walk in the light and they're children of light. So the true Israel are all those who are in the light, who've been born again. That's why on the breastplate of the priest, they had what? 12 stones, their precious stones offering up you are lively stones offering up spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are set unto... See, it sounds confusing, right? Unless you believe God and says, you know, the children of the flesh aren't children of God and all that stuff. But if you believe the lie that, oh, see, it's a race of people or it's the flesh, then you're going to be very, very confused. That stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered uh, thy children together? He said, I would have gathered thy children, your children. Feel ye up there in the measure of your fathers. He's saying, look, those are your children, not my children. The children of the flesh are not children of God. He's saying, you're the man of sin. You need to get out of the way. You stiff neck and uncircumcised a heart. He's saying you feed your children to Baal. You cast your children into the fire. Even as the hand gathered her chickens under her wings and ye would not. Whose fault? Who stopped the offering up of the spiritual sacrifices? Who stopped these guys from being born again? Did God say, Oh, I didn't want you to be saved in the first place. I'm a Calvinist. No, God's saying ye would not. You resist. He said, he said, um, the gospel was preached unto them as it was unto us, but it did not profit them being not mixed with what? Faith in them that heard it. They heard it. At some point they understood it and they just refused. Ye would not. 
Behold, your house is left the abomination of desolation, desolate. For I say unto ye, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye say, look, you got to receive me by faith. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Whose name do we come in? It's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. We're all sealed in the name of Jesus Christ. We believe on the name Jesus Christ. So man, if you're going to say I'm agnostic and you're going to accuse me of not believing the Bible, you got to give me scriptures. Don't send me verses or commentary. I'm telling you, I need you to show me where you believe, not direct me. See, I want to know what you believe. I don't want you to tell me. Remember when Jesus spoke to Peter? Who do ye say that I am? Some say, some say, no. Who do ye say? What do you believe? Nobody's going to stand before the Lord and say, it's Renee Rowland's fault, or it's Bible, it's Marcus's fault, or it's John MacArthur's fault, or even, oh, it's the such and such's fault. Everyone's going to be guilty on their own. You're responsible for whether you believe the gospel, and God is saying, it's, he's going to make it plain to you, and then it's going to be, either you believe the truth or you believe a lie. Either you're going to have a false God, and they're going to give you a false God with that trinity. That is a false God. And then there's going to be something to give you the false gospel. But if you have a false gospel, you, you're not saved. But if you have a false God, you're not saved. Even if you say you believe the, the true gospel. Now, let me make this very clear. I don't know who's saved and who's not. That's the point. You could have believed the true thing and got confused and mixed up. Right? You could, you could have believed and then somebody convinced you later on that it's not. But because you're born again and you're a new creature and the flesh man isn't the... See, the flesh man can be deceived, but guess who can't be deceived? Galatians 2.20 is no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. That's why it says if it was profitable, they could fool even the elect. Well, they can't fool the elect because the elect is guess who? Jesus Christ. So when it says the elect of Israel, that's talking about Christ, all those who are saved in Christ. Israel shall be saved in the Lord. All of Israel shall be saved. Well, who's true Israel then? If all of Israel shall be saved, it's all who are sealed in Christ. Who's a true Jew then? A Jew is not one outwardly, according to the flesh, but inwardly, circumcised in the heart by the Spirit. Who are the children of God? The children of the flesh aren't children of God. Well, where is God's kingdom? My kingdom is not of this world. Well, the kingdom's got to become, it's got to be offered to you. As the kingdom of God is at hand. Because you can't enter the kingdom, you got to believe, and then God will open. You got to go through the door. Then you can go into the kingdom, but you got to go through Jesus Christ. You got to believe on the on Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, the life. If you don't believe, you can't enter the kingdom. Unless a man be born again, he can't see nor enter the kingdom of God. Who stands in the way? Who's blocking you? Your unbelief. Your unbelief. That's what's stopping you. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And it says, when it was asked, what must I do to be saved? It said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The gospel of Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You believe that you pass from death to life and shall not come into condemnation. It is a free gift, not of works, lest any man should boast. God's no respecter of person. God's a God of the living and not the dead. The children of the flesh are not children of God. God's a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in the spirit and truth. God is a spirit. There's the man, Jesus Christ. There's Christ, the first fruits. That's the plural. That's the body and the bride, right? And then there's Jesus the Lamb who's married to New Jerusalem who is mother of us all which makes Jesus the Father so there's Christ the body the first fruits plural us created in Christ and then there's the head of Christ which is the head of the first fruits which is us the bride who's the Lamb who's obviously the Father because his wife is the mother of us all the Father Isaiah 9, 6, everlasting, 9, 6, everlasting Father. Psalms 89, 26. That are my God, my Father, the rock of my salvation. We all been made to drink of that spiritual rock. And that rock is, that spiritual drink. That spiritual rock and that rock is Christ. That rock is Christ. He's our Father. You have one Father. Okay? Praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.